This is Chit and Chat, the encouraging one of the podcast. Interview musicians, comedians, sports personalities, and basically whoever has a story. And that's pretty much anyone. Get back and relax for a fun time of encouragement and great music by artists from all over the world. This is Chit and Chat, the encouraging one of the podcast. What it's always about encouraging others. My network of spies, hidden truth beneath the lies, so smooth. When I glide, I put on a disguise, disappear before your eyes. Hot damn, I look good in this tux. I got an Austin Martin and a pocket full of bucks. Let's go to the casino tonight. Steal a microchip and then we're looking for a fight, cause I'm a spy. Spy versus spy. Hot damn. I turn eyes in Versace and lace. Then I use Kung Fu to get up out of this place. You say you're a spy? Well, I'm a spy too. And I got you in my sight. And there ain't nothing you can do. So get woke before you wind up dead. With an arrow in your back or a laser in your head. I got a barracuda. Better pray to Buddha. I don't want to kick. Chit and Chat, the encouraging one on a podcast. I'm your host, Jody Sheffield, uh, and I have some great tunes out for you today. You just heard Benji Phonic, Spy vs. Spy. I love that song. I love the movies. James Bond movies are always a big fan of mine. And uh, I believe this is one of the cool show out there. Chit and Chat, the encouraging one on a podcast. And now I, I reach out to people from all over the world, all walks of life, occupations. I'm a big fan of a couple of reality shows, both on CBS. At one show, they travel around the world doing different races. It's a format where they're in there just on the go. The Amazing Race. I love that show. Big, big fan of that show. The 
the other show I enjoy, I've watched several seasons, and the thing I love about this show is there's no alliances, there's no backstabbing, no voting people off. This show was created to celebrate the everyday American who not only tests their strength, their endurance, and skills, as well as mental toughness. And when you're watching this show, you see some great competitions, some truly David and Goliath battles. Um, and this show is called Tough as Nails. I've had a couple of ep- uh, people on from the show previously. Lauren Abels, uh, episode 89 on the show. Uh, and Kelly Murphy, you got call him Murph. He was on episode 109. Both these guys were on Tough as Nails. And I reached out to another competitor of the show. And I got some more lined up as well. I can't wait to hear more about his story, his experience of being on the show. And, and catching up with him and what he's doing. My guest today is Sergio Robles. And I can't wait to just talk to him. And it's a great, great guy. He's facing hard times and challenges as well. So kick back and relax. It'll be a fun, fun time with Sergio. And uh, this is Chit and Chat, the encouraging one other podcast was always about. That's right, encouraging others. Hello there. Hey, what's happening, man? How much? How you been doing? Oh, good. Good morning. Happy Saturday. <laughs> Happy Saturday. <laughs> hey, I'm uh, sorry so about I... last week, but it just, you know what I mean? Just things happen, and I just had to reschedule. So I'm glad we were able to reconnect, though. It's uh, it's life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I did a big, long introduction for you and everything. So welcome on to Chit and Chat. Uh, excited to talk, about, talk to you, hear your story a little bit, and as well as uh, tough as nails, so uh, I I love doing some ask very questions ahead of time and kind of just kind of get a get the wheels and the bus going. And I sent you one earlier. I give you a little freebie. Uh, our first okay. question is: If you could give, I could give you if I could give you and your wife two tickets anywhere in the world, a pay vacation week one, her choice; week two, your choice. Where are you going and why? Uh, the first, if she was to pick, we'd go to Bali, Indonesia because mm. she's, uh, so she's been, she was a designer for 22 years and, oh. um, she's really, she really loves the Indonesian style furniture and like the textiles that they use and this and that. So she's always wanted to go and just explore that firsthand, you know what I mean? And, and not only that, but just enjoy the, the Bali lifestyle. So mm-hmm. that would definitely be her pick. And my pick would just be Hawaii just because. I love the vibe, you know, the mm. Hawaiian laid back vibe. Go hang out on the North Shore and maybe if the timing's right, watch the Pipe Masters and and just have a, a laid back time. You know what I mean? I love reggae music. I just I just like I said, I love the culture. I've been there a few times as the Navy I was in Pearl Harbor a few times and, and one of my right. dad's friends found me and gave me a little grand tour of, of, of the different places on, on Hawaii. It was really, really cool. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Definitely right, so, love that place. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the weather's all, usually pretty good for the most part, isn't it? It's, I mean, uh, I, would, I would assume so. Yeah, exactly. Uh, question two, if you could add any event to the Summer Olympics that was from Tough as Nails, what event would you add to the Summer Olympics? <laughs> oh, uh, from any of the seasons or – uh, yeah, season four, particularly. Whatever one you, you kind of remember the most, or maybe one you did, you kind of was really good at or really bad at. Who knows? <laughs> Honestly, I would I would add the Catalina, um, the event changing out the mooring buoys out in the ocean. That's I mean, it, ace, it's, isn't it? Yeah, well, and not just because of that, but it's challenging. You really have to use your mind, your thought process, right? Like, how am I not going to lose? How am I not going to drop my carabiner and be instantaneously out of the competition, you mm-hmm. know, for the day? Mm-hmm. So um, I would like to see that just because, like I said, it involved running. He had to run, which I'm not a runner. OK, <laughs> I've, I've never <laughs> I've never been like, hey, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and go run five miles, you know, like some people do. And more power to them. That's awesome. But that's just not me. And so it involves running. It involves lifting. It involves using your mind you know what i mean so it would be mm-hmm. a perfect combo for that i'd love to see that yeah we is these 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 more uh uh different events i think in olympics you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> some more mind challenging uh yeah events, you know? 
little little pressure. Uh, number three, what was the best piece of advice you ever received, and maybe the worst piece of advice you might have received? <laughs> as far as just in, in life. life in general? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I would say, you know, my, my dad was very, he was very knowledgeable and, and a really laid back person. And he always told me, you know, to give it, give it your all, mm -hmm. give it a hundred percent, you know, don't ever go out there and, and just, if you're going to work, you give it a hundred percent, let, let people know why you're there and what you stand for. Mm -hmm. And he always told me that, and you'll never have a problem. You'll be you'll always be a standout. And then I would say, like, I don't know, the worst advice I've ever received is to, uh, let's see. Gosh, that one's tough. <laughs> uh, the worst advice I've ever received. Oh, uh, gosh, what what could it be? I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, man, that one you got me stumped on that one. All Worst right. advice I've ever received. Uh, we, we come come back to it, or just keep on going. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I I guess I heard it from my oh, never settle down. You know, my brother was just a wild guy. He loved life and he loved to live it up with his buddies. And he was like, oh, don't settle down. Don't ever get tied down. You know, because then life's over. So, you know, I just say, what? What's up with that, dude? Mm -hmm. You know, he, I don't know. I think he was married at one time and then it didn't pan out. So he would always, oh, don't, don't settle down. It don't, okay. It's not worth it. You know, so I'm like, whatever. But I ended up settling down and I love it. <laughs> so. Number four, what has been one of the most challenging jobs you've ever had? And why was it so challenging? Oh man, one of the most challenging jobs. Uh, it's what I do right now, being a carpenter. Um, you know, for when you first get in, you get trained as an apprentice, right? And you get thrown out into the lion's den. And so I'm 53. I've been at it 25 years. So when I first got in, it was a whole different vibe, right? You would get mm -hmm. screamed at, yelled at, belittled. You just never, you just never felt the. Uh, like you had any worth, right? Nobody was very, nobody encouraged you back in those days. But at the same time, they made you work hard, right? So I think that was the most challenging part because I didn't like being talked to like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, it used to piss me off. I used to want to just drop my bags and you know what I mean? And like, go, well, we'll fix this right now. You know what I mean? And <laughs> it, it took some time to get over that hump. But in the long run, now that, now that I'm pointing, you know, pointing fingers as a general foreman, I think back to those days and I'm like, I, I always told myself I would never be like that because it was mm -hmm. challenging. Like I said, there was those days when you'd be driving to work, just going, damn, do I really <laughs> want to go to work for this guy today? You know? And, uh, and so now I just treat my guys like I want to be treated, right? I treat them with respect, but I also tell them don't mistake my kindness for weakness, you mm -hmm. know, because mm -hmm. don't make the the old lion come out in me, you know, because you're not going to like it. But if you just do what I'm asking you to do, we're going to get through this day. And I try and encourage them. You know, I, I like to build them up. How do you do that? Just by letting them, reminding them, you know, why they're out there. You know, what, what I always ask them, what do you come out here for on a daily basis? And they always say family. And I said, okay, aside from that, I get that. Everyone wants to work for their family. They all need to eat. I go, but what else? You know, are you here just because, you get paid every Friday, you know, you, you make a good wage or you're here because you want to be a standout and, and display what you've been taught to do. You've mm -hmm. been gifted. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of men can come out here, and carry 50 pounds on their shoulders for eight, sometimes 14 hours a day and get through that day. You know what I mean? It, it it's tough. And, uh, you know, they think about it and they're like, some of them say, you know what? You're right. I do want to be a standout. I do want to be better than I am. And, and I just tell them every day, be better today than you were yesterday. Turn up that dial on that heater a little bit. Yesterday it was 70. Let's make it 71 degrees today. You know, you I go. don't expect you guys to, I don't expect you to go from 70 to 80 instantaneously. It takes time. Right. So I just remind them about why they're there and how gifted they are, you know. 
you know, a lot of folks when they a lot of big time ball players have a theme song when they walk into a room. If you had a theme song when you walked into a room or to a job site, what would that theme song be? <laughs> oh man, I I have so many. Uh oh gosh. Let's see. Uh working man from Rush. Mm, okay. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard it before. Oh yeah. Yeah, Rocky so Rocky. yeah. Yeah, just loud and proud walking in. They call me the working man, you know. <laughs> for those who might not know you, I know you from watching the hit show Tough as Nails. Give us a little brief bio and who Sergio Robles is, please. All right. So I'm Sergio Robles. I was born and raised in Orange County um, all my life. Uh, I was born in the city of Orange, raised in Santa Ana. And then um, I've been in Huntington Beach for about, I don't know, over 20 years now. Um, I come from a family of five. My, I had my mom, my dad, my sister, and my brother. My father and my brother, they both passed on. So now it's just the three of us. Um, so, yeah, I just I was born and raised in the mean streets of Orange County. Uh, and I can't complain. I love where I come from. Uh, I'm married now to my beautiful wife and have a stepdaughter who just turned 32. We have a home. We bought a home back in 2000 in, uh, in Huntington beach. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, life's good. I can't complain. Uh, um, I love my wife dearly. She's changed my life immensely. Helped me open my eyes to a lot of different things. She's a pusher, you know? <laughs> so when it came time to the show, I kind of almost tapped out as far as the interviews go. And, um, because of my brother passing on and I was really bummed out, but she kept reminding me saying he he'd be pissed off if you didn't do this. So Mm -hmm. I did it. Lo and behold, I got there, but um, yeah, I mean, I love action sports, anything from golf, baseball, surfing, dirt bike riding, you name it. I love it. Snowboarding, um, all of the above. Uh, uh, I love good food. I love seafood, steak. Uh, Those are one of my favorites. Mm, but nice. uh, yeah um what was your what uh, childhood like when you were growing up having you my child ch- your childhood my childhood uh growing up my childhood was i can't complain i mean my mom and dad you know took care of all of us i i just uh i actually i had to start working at an early age so at 13 while my buddies after junior high would go ride bmx on these tracks what that we would make on the weekends i had to go to work um, but I appreciate that because it just showed me what working is all about. Right. So, uh, I have some regrets sometimes when I'm like, man, I could have been having all that fun, but at the same time they were trying to show me something. Right. So, uh, I did play a lot of sports. I played, uh, at seven, I started playing junior all American tackle football and my brother and my dad coached me. And then I got into baseball uh, as a youngster. And then as I got into high school, I wrestled um was involved in martial arts and my parents were always about us being active in something and um you know they treated us great we we come from a a good family my my dad was in the service out of the service started a machine shop him and my mom actually started it together they worked together um and that's where i started my childhood career is in a machine shop working. So I got paid. Oh. I learned how to run, uh, make, uh, aircraft parts. So my dad coached me up and then my brother worked there. My sister worked there. Um, then later on in life, you know, as time would have it, uh, my father passed on, we ended up selling the business and we all went our ways. But, um, going back to my childhood, I, I can't complain. I had a great childhood. My parents, they took us everywhere. We traveled a lot. We were very fortunate. You know, my dad always wanted the best for us. So, same is with my mom. You, is that where you got your worth ed- ethics from your dad? And I, seen how he taught you? I get them from both. You know, my mom's 93, and she if she could work <laughs> or drive a forklift in a warehouse, she would still do it. <laughs> she, uh, she still drives every day. We have to, like, track her down and, and uh, find out where she's at via cell phone. Where are you? I'm at Costco. They had a sale. I'm at Sam's, the paper towels, they were on sale or somewhere she's out with her sister, right? And 
or I go over and she's got an electric trimmer in her hand that she just bought at the Home Depot to trim her hedges. That's just who she is. She's nonstop. My father was the same way. Unfortunately, you know, he he drank a lot, um, and that's ultimately what took his life. I have no regrets about it, but because he was a good man, he just uh, he wasn't an abusive guy. He was just a great man, and that was his way of relaxing. But it just caught him off guard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Treated He's my mom special. like royalty. So he served in the army, right? Yeah, he did. He served in the Forgotten War. He fought in Korea. Oh wow! Yeah, he uh, he went out to Korea, and then, like I said, when he came home, he he didn't know what he was going to do. He got into a trade school uh, for machining. That's a, lot of, a lot of military people. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So, no, nah, my again, my childhood was it was good. So uh, I can't complain. So I, I bet you know, family has always been a huge part of you, you know, staying together and being connected and just hanging out. And, you know, uh, my parents are in Arkansas. I'm in Washington State. I have a brother in Colorado. So it's just, I'm kind of envious of you always being together and close close to my family. wife's family is a lot here. So it's uh, having yeah. them together is really cool. Sure. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, I do. I do. I can honestly say since my father passed and time has gone on and now my brother's passed, the dynamics changed a little bit, you know? I mean, mm-hmm. it's just, I guess it's life. It happens. Um, but I miss those days of, I remember uh, when my grandma was alive, my mom's mom, we used to just have massive parties. There'd be like 80 of us all together, you know, <laughs> on Easter, Christmas. And so it has changed a little bit, but for the most part, yeah, I, I love spending time with my family. That's all. At the end of the day, that's all you've got. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, yeah. You can have friends. And like I tell my, my stepdaughter, you know, you have friends. I go, but at the end of the day, we're your real friends. We're yeah. the ones that are going to be here for you. The door will always be open. And we're going to see you through the good, the, the bad, whatever, you know. In your early years working with your dad, I never had the opportunity to work with my dad on a job site or anything like that. How uh-huh. cool was that, earning the tricks of the trade from your dad and kind of seeing people around your dad being, you know, his respect for others and his work ethics? How cool was that for you growing up as a child? Oh, uh, man, it was it was awesome because I think back, you know, and that's where I get a lot of my my traits from. My dad was a very teachable person, right? If, if one of his guys was struggling, I used to remember him going out there, okay, he would take the blueprint, set it on the bench, and say, come on over here, I'm going to show you something. And I remember specifically, he would just sit there and, and walk him through the whole process and then sit there and say, okay, let's set up the machine, right? And he would take that guy and he would coach him through it. And I, I, I can remember plain as day, those guys would do anything for my dad because of the way he treated them. Mm. My father, if he knew they were struggling, he would loan them money. If they were going through hard times and he would tell them, I don't need, you don't have to pay me back. I just want to help you. You know what I mean? And lo and behold, these guys would come back two, three years later if they were still working for my dad. Here's that money you loaned me, wow. you know? And <clears throat> that's, that's where I get a lot of my traits. I love to help people. I like to see it, encourage them and help them. Uh, but all in all, working for my pops, it was great, you know, because again, my mom was there too. My brother was there. Now my brother and my dad... They didn't see eye to eye a lot of the times because my brother was a stubborn guy, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, but at the same time, uh, my brother was a big part of the process and my dad sent him to New York to uh, teach him how to program the machines that were in our shop because they were all computerized. And so he came back and, you know, I mean, it was just one of those things where not everybody always sees eye to eye, right? My brother was younger and his, he felt like he was smarter. <laughs> My dad had been in the trade for already X amount of years. He knew everything to the T. Like, <laughs> w- w- I mean, he could tell you anything. You could ask him, hey, what's going to happen if I make this too small? And then when we go to heat it, to harden it, what will happen? And he could tell you how much it would expand. I mean, he was just a knowledge, uh, wealth of knowledge, you know what I mean? Wow. Uh, well, fast yeah, forward so. a few years, uh, to when you became a union carpenter, do you remember uh-huh. your very first place you worked at? Um, yeah, <laughs> I'll never forget it. <laughs> they sent Uh-oh. me out to this. Uh, they sent me out to this job site. I was a first period apprentice, 
Um, I was going to do, I was doing earthquake retrofit. So what it consisted of was going in an old building and all the beams that carried the roof, we had to, we had to basically put a new beam on each side, drill holes through them with these bolts. So I show up and there's a crew of six guys and they're all like big dudes, right? You could tell they've been around for a while. And, uh, my first experience was, I'm just saying, Hey, what the F are you doing? Let's go. You're going to stand there. And I was like, <laughs> and then nobody even told me what to do yet. So they're all go get in that lift right there. I had never been in a scissor lift. I was like, lift, what lift? They're all that right there. You moron. So I go get in it. <laughs> they put, they send me like two stories up in the air with this guy. And he goes, all right. You're going to drill. You're going to take this drill. And I knew about drills because I'd used them at my dad's shop, right? And I'm like, okay, cool. And he goes, and you're going to drill all the way through that beam. Well, the lift only went so high. So these guys, safety wasn't even, you know, they didn't <laughs> what's, even bat an safety? eye at safety. <laughs> and I'm like, how am I going to get up there? He goes, you're going to stand on that rail. And you're going to, I was like, I'm going to do what? So I get up there. Long story short, man, it was a nightmare. All for three days. I got screamed and yelled at like I was just a piece of trash, man. I'll never forget it oh. from six people screaming at me, right? Well, lo and behold, I get a phone call from a buddy of mine, my best friend who was in the union that actually got me in, and he said, hey, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm on the phone, and I'll never forget it because the guy goes, are you effing kidding me, dude? You're on the phone right now? And I looked at him. I was like, <laughs> at that point, I was pissed. I was like, yes, I am. I go, hold on a minute. And and he goes, wait, you're telling me to hold on? And I said, yeah. And I go, what's up, Mike? And he goes, where are you? I told him what I was doing. He goes, tell him you quit right now. I got you a job doing interior finish. I'm all, what? <laughs> he goes, you start tomorrow. You need to go to Home Depot, and you need to buy this, this, and this. We'll be working in L.A. And I was like, all right. So I hung up the phone, and I, the lift I was in with that guy. I said, hey, take me down. I got to go to the restroom. And he goes, oh, now you got to go to the restroom. So he takes me down. And I, I looked at him. I said, hey, I'm out of here later. And he goes, what? I said, I quit. <laughs> you guys can all kiss my ass. <laughs> and uh, and from then on, I start, I was doing interior finish. But I'll, I will never forget that, man. It was I was like, what? Is this a like nightmare oh, that I'm living right now? That's Why? crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had. No, nobody to say, hey, man, this is what we're going to be doing. You're going to go up there and you're going to do that. And that's that. I was like, okay. <laughs> and, and 26 years later, I think it is, you know, you've been at yep. it. Uh, at that time, when you're at a job site, you hear your dad's advice in the back of your head or something. You're like, wait, wait, I should do this or this. <laughs> all, all the time. Him and my brother. You know what I mean? Like, uh, my brother would always get excited. My dad was the calm one, right? So in the heat of battle, when there's certain things going on, like I get, I'll get hot. And when I say I get hot, like my voice will raise a little bit. Right. But it's just so they hear me and, and they'll, I, I don't like to belittle them. Right. Because I hate that. I, I don't like when people do that. I like to let them know where I'm coming from. Basically mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Oh dang, we better move. His voice is, you know what I mean? He, he never talks to us like that. So when I do, they get the hint, you know, so uh, I got to I think about my brother and I'm like, OK, I don't want to I don't want to be like that. And then I think about my dad and I can hear my dad just saying, relax, it's going to be fine. You know what I mean? You're going to get through it. But, uh, yeah, I always hear them all the time. And I know I they're out, with me. And I reached out to you because I saw you on, on Top of Nails and you're the third person I've had on. I had uh, Larry Nables on uh, a while back. And I had Murph, Kelly Murphy on as well. So you're the oh, third, wow. the third uh, guest from Top as Nails. I love just reaching out to people from around the world and hearing, you know, stories. I can hear a lot of friends with others as well from the show. So I love sure. to these on and get their experience about the show. But get, take you back to the second where you were getting interviewed for the show. And, uh -huh. and well, how was that process? And, and your wife, your wife kind of put a kick in your butt to get, get you to do it? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the crazy part was I was out the way it all started, I was at work and I was on a forklift and I, I had my earbuds in and, um, I heard this bleep going, it was an email and I was like, that's weird. I never get emailed. And so 
I pulled over. I shut the forklift off. I looked at the email and it said, hi, um, my name's uh, so-and-so from CBS television. I'd like to talk to you. And I was like, what the hell? I'm all, <laughs> okay. And the reason why they did that was because a couple of days prior to that, uh, there was a Instagram from our Carpenter's uh, Instagram page. It They shot out uh, Tough as Nails season four looking for contestants apply. Mm-hmm. I was like, what the heck? Because I've watched the show since season one. My wife and I had always watched it. And I remember years ago her saying, you think you could do that? And I was like, yeah, I know I could do that. I never thought I'd get the opportunity. So that happened. I get the email. I come home and I'm sitting on my couch going, there's there's no way. So I show my wife. I'm like, what does that say? She goes, CBS television. What the? Why do they want to talk to you? And I go, that show tough as nails. I filled out an application. She goes, what? (laughs) <laughs> what well we need to we need to get on this so she it was almost like she was the one going to sign up for the show and so uh i I did the first interview and then they said okay great well then i got another uh email saying hey we'd like to talk to you again we'd like to learn more about you somebody else is going to contact you so it went on and on for like i don't know it was like three months right of of interviews with different producers different uh personnel from CBS and um lo and behold the next thing they know they I got on I'll never forget I got the Skype with Louise Bill wasn't there but it was Louise and all the producers for season four and they were all asking me questions and then they said well how would you feel about joining do you think you could win the season I said I know I can and they said you know because we're talking to a lot of people who are probably 20 30 years you know young or at least 20 years younger than you and i said that that's okay i can keep up with them you know and then um i just shared about my brother and this and that and and you know i'm a cancer survivor and then um i don't know we went on and on and next thing i know i was at the dentist and an email came through and i was on the dental i'm sitting in the chair (laughs) And I was like, hey, can you hold on a second? And he's all, sure. And I remember I looked and I said, guess who's going to L.A.? Pack your bags. And I was like, I almost <laughs> sat up and hit my head on the light. I was like, what? And I, and he was like, is everything okay? I said, yeah, I, um, sure. And he's like, I'm almost done. So he finishes up. And I get out in my truck and I call my wife. I go, are you kidding me right now? I'm going to L.A. And she's like, what do you mean? And I said, for the show. She's all, what? And sure enough, I mean, I ended up in L.A. And then when we got there, there were still 18 contestants that they were choosing from. Well, it ended up that I was part of the the six out of 18. Obviously, only 12 of us made it. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the 12. So just the whole process was wild uh, from meeting with a psychiatrist, you know what I mean? Doing the workout videos weekly, the burpees and turning them all in and. It, uh, yeah, it was a wild ride. So you shared us the very first day when you got to meet the entire cast and, and you started uh, filming and you get to meet Phil. What was that like? And just kind of see people from all walks of life, all different types of jobs and different trades. Um, that first day I was like, I'm a, I'm like, a, I'm kind of geeky when it comes to stuff like that. Right. I get starstruck and, uh, it was just weird, you know, like. Being there, like, I used to watch this show on TV, and now I'm on it. You know what I mean? I'm like, this is crazy. But so, like, one thing, like, we weren't able to talk to each other. They, We couldn't talk at all until, and it was minimal words until we started filming, right? And then, basically, the bottom line is they wanted us to get to know each other on the show. Okay. Right, because none of this is scripted. It's reality TV. It's like we don't. We're just twelve strangers, and and that's all. So when we got there, um, like I said, they would tell you, "Okay, stop talking." <laughs> I used to be like, "Wait a minute, I'm a grown man, damn it!" <laughs> tell me to stop talking. Are you kidding me right now? And so everybody was kind of like, "Okay, we can't talk. We just got to stare at each other." So, anyways, we we did it all, whatever. But um, meeting all those people. So, like, halfway through filming the first day, we finally got to sit down and break bread together and talk, and it was cool. I mean, and the one thing I can say is that, like, just everybody had a great vibe, right? There wasn't, like, this, 
like uh, who do you think you are or attitudes. I, yep. Our season, we meshed well. I mean, I'm not going to lie. There were days, but at the end of the day, everybody would be like just good to each other. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's not often that you get 12 strangers from around the country that can just come and mesh the way we did. And, and it, was it when your filming began, was that when your brother had passed? So my brother had passed in February. So of the same year. And oh, wow. um, yeah, so I just, I was just going through a funk, you know, and during the whole interview process and doing the burpees, that's, there were those days, I'm not going to lie that I was like, you know what, man, I, I I'm still not into this, you know? Mm-hmm. I wasn't happy. And so uh, my wife would just say, your brother would be so pissed off uh-huh. if you were to tap out because yeah. you know how he is. He never let you tap out. And I'm like, and that would feel the fire. So <laughs> by her doing that, you know, I just kept pushing and pushing. And, and in my mind, you know, I had to get my mind right and say, you know what? She's right. I'm going to dedicate this to my brother. So... <laughs> You spoke about it often during some little little clips and 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 film. You know, I, I come to you do like a little interview. You shared a lot about him and his inspiration to you. I thought that's pretty awesome. No, it it just like I said. So after my brother, after my father passed in 1994, it was just my brother and I, you know, um, and my mom and my sister. And so him and I, I live in Huntington. He was always in Huntington. We would get together and we'd hang out together and go have beers or whatever and food. And um, we would talk about work because after the machine shop, my brother naturally just fell into carpentry and started doing his own thing. Had a crew of, you know, guys that would work for him and he would always call me for advice. And it was a trip because I would always ask him for advice when I was younger at the machine shop. Right. Mm. So he'd say, hey, bro, I got this roof that I'm working on and this and that. What would you do? And, And I would tell him. And he's like, dang, you're right. All right, cool. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I just miss all those times, you know, being able to talk to him and help each other. A few things I like about that was nails is there's no alliances. There's no voting people off. You know, you can be, you can honestly feel the love for everyone, especially your so they're there for one, their families and, and pride and not to quit, you know. So I just love that mentality of of this this particular show. Yeah, no, I I love it too. Um, I think Tough as Nails is very underrated, if you ask me. I mean, it should be at the top of the food chain as far as reality TV shows goes. You yeah. know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I mean, I my wife and I watch a lot of reality TV. And I don't like to admit it, but it's all good. Uh, we watch them all, the housewives, anything that's reality. Cause it, it kind of, it's interesting to me, you know what I mean? To see how, like I compare notes from what we did to what they're doing. And you can see how scripted these other shows are. Cause people yeah. have asked me, how long did you guys get to rehearse? And I'm like, rehearse what? <laughs> they're like, well, those... yeah, I'm serious. It's a trip. They're like, well, like the challenges you did. I'm like, we didn't get any rehearsal time. I'm like, that's why they call it reality TV. Yeah. We got a tutorial. I'll tell you that. We maybe got a tutorial for every challenge and that's basically it. And they're like, well, wait a minute. What if you never done something like that? Well, then <laughs> you better you figure, figure it out, out real quick. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I said, that's the whole premise behind tough as nails is putting people in a situation where they're under pressure and might've not done something like that before. And, and so, you know, I just, like I said, I think it deserves more ratings than what it gets right now. Right. And, and when you get to the point where you, you have to check out, you know, and you checked a little early in the game, but you still yeah. competed, you still you still had team challenges, you mm-hmm. know, and you want to commit uh, to, to complete each task and still win money for, you know, your team and your family. Uh, yeah, is that is that a hard mentality that when you check that out, oh, I'm not going to win. You just going to nope. I'm just going to keep on going. No, you know because I, I just I'm not like that, right? I was there for a purpose, and then those my teammates and including the other teammates. I mean, that's all you've got for the time being for seven weeks. You know what I mean? And you you learn to lean on each other really fast, and uh, because when you get everything taken away from you for seven weeks. 
including your cell phone and everything else, and it's just you by yourself, you get lonely real quick. You know what I mean? Going from a, a, a daily routine to just like, okay, here I am all alone with all these strangers and nobody <laughs> to talk to. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So they become your family. And that's why I'm saying like this season, we all meshed really well. Uh, even when we were at our hotel room, you know, we'd all hang out together, barbecue and do fun stuff like that, go on hikes uh, on the weekends. But um, yeah, I just, all in all, I, I can't complain. And like when I got, when I got, uh, when I had to tap out after the, squid challenge you know stuff in the squid yep so initially i knew i could win that i was like every challenge and not to be not to pump myself up but any challenge that they presented to us i didn't have an issue with it when it came to the motor challenge i've done motors with my brother when it came to the block wall i've built block wall with family members you know what I mean? Yeah. It just seemed like everything that they threw at us, I had something in my wheelhouse. And um, but the ice challenge, yeah, that was that I, I was like, okay, this is gonna be a battle, you know. That's a lot of ice to break. But all in all, <laughs> my goal was to win the show, and I, I know that I could have up until I blew my back out on the tree mm-hmm. challenge. And that is why when I got when I tapped out, I was struggling just to put those squid in that box. Yeah. Every every scoop. And I just bit down because I could hear it in my in my head, my brother just saying, Don't you tap out, dude. Don't <laughs> we don't go down like that. Keep fighting. Right. And I was giving it my all, but I was in agony. Mm-hmm. You know? You know, and some of those challenges like could... some of those challenges are very, very tough. And you see a, a man versus a, a female. I mean, oh, this guy's got it. And the female wins. It's like David and Goliath. Oh, it's, it's uh, so cool, man. Oh, uh, hey, if that's one thing that impressed the hell out of me about the season. I mean, I had seen the girls on the previous challenges, right? But to see it firsthand, to see how hard they work for it, it blew my mind. I, I, I commended them all the time, even when we were just hanging out, you know, not filming. I'm like, you guys are ass kickers. I, I, <laughs> I'm impressed. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, I mean, I was bummed, but at the same time, like I told him, just because I'm out doesn't mean I'm going to stop fighting for us. I'll, I'll give it as I'll give it a hundred percent, you know, I, whatever I can. I found your quote when you uh, when you got, you know, you checked out and you said a quote: "The work is not done yet. You still have a lot to give back, and you want to honor your brother's legacy." That was pretty cool. Yeah, no, uh, like I said that. <laughs> that's just my work ethic you know i i share that with those guys every day at work you know mm-hmm. what i mean mm-hmm. i tell so we do this thing called stretch and flex right and uh and i always tell them don't tap out do not tap out until that clock strikes three mm-hmm. you know what mm-hmm. i mean yep you got to stay in the fight all day long and uh that's just my my brother and my dad taught me that you know I learned from them. We don't quit. You know, we're not quitters. Being on the so, show, you and you and your friend uh, George, uh, got, yep. yeah, we began working together afterwards. And, yeah, I hired uh, him, and he still works for me. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, look at him. Yeah, he's a hustler. He won too, right? <laughs> he did. Yep. <laughs> oh, I see that truck every day. <laughs> I get reminded of it. <laughs> no, right, but I, I couldn't be. I love the quote when you guys said it was like two kids in the candy store when you got there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm telling you, man, it's just uh, that kid, if anyone deserved it, and not to take away from anyone else, everybody had their, their story, but, you know, for a guy at his age to have to take over the family, you know, mm-hmm. at 12 years old, basically, and see after his sisters and his mom and, and feel like he had to step up as the role of the man of the house. Uh, that's huge. You know what I mean? And, um, getting to know him, him talking about, you know, I wasn't my wife and I, I want to give her the wedding that she always deserved because I couldn't afford to do it and this and that. And, uh, he goes, that's, that's what I would do with the money, you know? And I'm like, that's awesome, man. And I used to tell him, I'm like, well, 
you have it in you to do it. I can tell, you know, I can see the fire in you. And, um, mm -hmm. of course, being that he was a carpenter, that's why I put him on my team. I, I couldn't deny him. I would have gotten, I would have gotten a beat down from the carpenters union had I not, <laughs> <laughs> but all in all, I just, when I saw him, I could tell there, I, he had fire in him and I was like, I need that kid on the team. So after filming, he wins the show. I called him and I said, Hey, I've got a spot. But I need to know right now if you can start tomorrow, because if not, they want that I need to call somebody else. And he goes, I'll be there. So he's been with me for almost two years now. That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, working together, it's cool because I tell him, I go, come on, George, let's throw down a tough as nails challenge right now. I got to get this wall buttoned up. Let's get after it. He's all, all right. Let's go, dude. Let's go. I get him all fired up. Nice. Does he give you a ride in the yeah. truck? <laughs> I, I actually the first day he drove up i walked up i said hey open that door man i just gotta smell the interior <laughs> <laughs> you know being together during that time you guys were seven weeks you said you know take us a little behind the scenes and what's it's like being you know you're when you're off screen the cameras are off uh what's it like building like relationships with each other and, and stuff like that oh uh, it, it was uh okay so off when we weren't filming on the weekends was basically our free time Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we would either one go work out with Pete, our trainer at the beach or go on hikes. Or they would say, do you guys want to go to the farmer's market and just walk around, let your hair down. And, uh, everyone, we'd all, you know, everyone would have their input, but we'd all come to an agreement. We'd go do our thing. We'd take the bands and we would just all like freaking walk shoulder, you know, arm in arm and just laugh. I mean, there was never a, like, I never heard anybody talking negative to each other. We always just were laughing, having a good time. Uh, we would, we would clown each other about challenges, right? Uh, just because we could, that's how, that's the type of people that were on that show. Like nobody would be like, oh, that's effed up, dude. Why would you even say something like that? You know you. what I mean? Oh, uh, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Anyways, um, when we would hang out on the weekends, you know, we could clown each other about challenges. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we would just laugh. So it, it everybody was cool, man. It was good times. <laughs> what one of the cool scenes I liked, and it was uh, very briefly, but you guys are breaking bread and down by the water, and you let a short prayer, and I thought that was just so awesome that. You, you you guys are together, and you're you're thanking the Lord for their you know their time together, and, and I thought that was really really cool. Yeah, that's just my faith. Uh, you know, I'm a God fearing man, um, and uh, that's that. You know, I mean, granted, we're not perfect every day; we stumble and fall, but it's cool to know that we can serve a God that forgives us. You know what I mean? And doesn't and doesn't see us as a a perfect person. You know. Right. Well, Maybe. I should let me take that back. It does see us perfect. It's just. It's our our vision, our version of right. imperfection, you know. And you mentioned earlier so, on that you were a, a kidney cancer survivor. You want to share about that a little yeah. bit? Yeah. Yeah. So in 2014, um, I'm working. I got my bags on, and uh, it was a Monday, and I, I just I felt some pain in my left side, and I was telling a buddy of mine, he's like, Ah, dude, you don't you don't get pain. You're good. And I was like, Yeah, you're right. So <laughs> I'm working. Tuesday comes along. I'm plugging away, same thing, same guy. I go, hey, man, that pain does not go away. He goes, you're just sore, dude. We've been climbing all day, every day. Yeah, you're right. Thursday rolls around. I come home. I'm on my couch. Uh, my little dog that probably weighs eight pounds jumps on me, and, and it literally buckled me. He jumped on my left side, and I was like, oh, well, then after that, the pain didn't subside. So I was telling my wife, I go, something's not right. She goes, well, what do you want to do? So we go to the hospital, I get an x-ray. They tell me, you have diverticulitis. Okay, what's that? Uh, it's these pockets on your, on your bowel that are inflamed. They're common in people, but certain things, certain people don't get it. Some do. So then they said, uh, that was after a CT scan. That's how they discovered it. And then they said, um, but we want to talk to you about something else. And I'm like, all right, what's that? They go, we found a, a tumor on your right kidney i go a tumor or a or what and they said a mass and i said okay and i didn't even bat an eye at it right i'm like all right no big deal 
And then the doctor goes, so I need to do some further testing. I go, why? And he goes, well, I want to know what it is. And I said, what do you mean? What do you think it is? I go, don't, I go, if you don't tell me everything right now that you're thinking, I'm not going to sleep tonight or the rest of the weekend. Mm-hmm. He goes, well, I want to make sure that it's not cancer. And I was like, what? And he goes, 99% of the time, a tumor like that on a kidney, it's a cancerous tumor. He goes, but I can't say for sure until we test it. Mm-hmm. I did the biopsy. Two days later, they call me, or two weeks later, I had to wait for two weeks, and my doctor calls me. And This time, it was an oncologist. He says, yeah, I'm an oncologist, a kidney a urologist, and this and that. Urologist, oncologist, I need to see you. Uh, I said, why? And he goes, I, I just need to see you on my office on Monday. This was a Friday when he called me. I go, tell me now, dude, please, what's going on? Right. Is it cancer? And he broke it down. He goes, yeah, you have cancer. We need to get on this right away. So that's how I found out, just by a different infection I had in my intestine. And uh, they discovered the cancer. They operated in 2014. Six months for two years after that, every six months, I had to go get a CT scan and an MRI to make sure that it wasn't coming back. And so, thank the Lord, man, I've been cancer free since 2014. Well, it's awesome. Yeah, so. Yeah, it was it was scary. It was a battle, but I fought through it, you know. And you have a, a story to tell too for people you might be going through that, you know, sometimes we're like, uh, I'm okay." You know, like you said. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah, I tell all these youngsters that I work with, don't hesitate to go get your blood work done or go get checked out because you never know. You know what I mean? Like I work with guys, they're like, "Dude, I haven't been to the doctor like in 10 years." I'm like, "What?" I go, you never, I go, why? I go, have you not been sick? Yeah, but dude, I just ride it out at home. You know what I'm saying? I shouldn't say 10 years. I'm probably exaggerating. Maybe like five or a couple years. But, you know, I tell them, don't, don't hesitate. You know, just go get checked out. Never Uh, know. What what is your current job? What are you doing these days? So right now I'm working at the, uh, it's OC Sanitation District plant right here down the street from my house like two miles away, uh, we're building, we're basically rehabbing the place. We're building, uh, new tanks, um, new buildings, and it's all concrete construction from the ground up. So I'm a general foreman at Kiwit Corporation. Um, Kiwit does anything from bridge work to, uh, water power bridge and Marine. So right now I'm in the, um, I'm just in the structures department right now. We're building, basically big concrete buildings. Uh, this podcast is about reaching out to people all, all walks of life, hearing the story, and uh, you definitely have faced some challenges, some adversity. Uh, how important is, is it in receiving encouragement as well as giving encouragement to someone out there who could be going through some hard times and stuff? Uh, man, I think it, it's everything. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, – I always relate it back to work, right? Because I I tell these guys, I tell my guys, don't belittle each other and don't be calling each other names. I go, because at the end of the day, you never know what your buddy's going through. Some people will share, some people will hold it in. All right. And the last thing a person needs to do is show up to work. That's going through a serious battle at home or whatever. Maybe lost a loved one and you're going to sit there and belittle them. How, How would you like it? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? You need to mm-hmm. just encourage somebody. If you see, if you see them, if they they look down to you, just ask them, "What's up, man? You good?" You know, you can tell me, talk to me, man. That's what we're here for. But I I think it's important to encourage people. You know, you have people need that. Like I said, because you never know what somebody's going through, and yep. it's always encouraging when you can, when even when you look at somebody and say, "Hey, dude, you did a great job today," you know. That's uplifting. You yep. know what I mean? You want to, no matter what trade or at home, however, I mean, you want people to be uplifted. You want them to show up to work and say, that's my boss right there. I'll do anything for that guy. That's my teammate right there. I'll do anything for that guy. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, Like I said, I mean, just encouragement. It's a daily necessity, especially in today's life, man. Today is so crazy. And it, this world is just like, it's so dysfunctional right now, you know what I mean? Yeah, and a little so bit, yep, yep. We definitely got to preserve what we've got, you know? 
Well, Sergio Abdel, thank you for our time today. We really appreciate it. And I loved hearing your story and you're truly an inspiration to uh, many out there. Your work ethic, uh, fighting cancer, beating cancer. And I wish you nothing but the best. I'm going to get some more of your friends on from the show and kind of sharing your yeah. story. And uh, you're more welcome to, to share it. I'll tag you with I can tag you, tag you when this comes out in a few weeks. And okay. Thank you for the time, man. We appreciate it. No, hey, I appreciate you. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I encourage you to get some more of the cast members on there. They would love it. They'd be so stoked to, to sit down and chat with you. But appreciate uh, I appreciate you reaching out. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Sergio Robles from Tough as Nails. Thank you so much. Yeah, buddy. Take All care. right. Bye-bye. Yeah, take care of yourself. Have a great day. All yes. right, brother. Bye-bye. Our next song is by Sunday and Mr. Gessel, When You're Smiling. When you're smiling, when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. And when you're laughing, oh, when you're laughing, the song come shine but when you're crying oh, you bring no memory so stop your crying and be happy again cause when you're laughing and when you're smiling the When you're smiling, when you're smiling, when you're smiling, when you're smiling the whole world smiles with you. And when you're laughing, 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 when you're laugh
So, you step into my way, stand down. It's a trap, one more step, and you're dead. Now you're dead. Why just a pick a second ago, clear blue skies, but now lightning struck your last resolve. It's not an accident that no one hears your cries as your last strength seems to dissolve. You'll never see it coming. You say that my mind is too fast for your eyes. You're done now. But the time has hit you, your last surprise. I'm coming for you. My game's always so fast, so fine. You spun out, but the net you didn't catch it in time. your game are you sure your next move's the right one for you are you sure you won't get out maneuvered again and again my friend you'll never see it coming you say that my mind is too fast for your eyes you're done now but the time is hit you it's your last surprise I'm coming for you. My game's always so fast, so fine. You're spawning, but the net you didn't catch it in time. I want to take a few minutes and thank each of my sponsors. From day one, these sponsors have been along this side and more and more are being part of this podcast. I love sharing about locally owned businesses here in the area in my backyard and how important it is to share about them. But thank you, Lone Star Donuts. They have three businesses, Port Orchard, Soda, and Poles Bowl. Amazing tasting, fresh donuts every day. Takiza and Takiza Street, Roberto and his staff are amazing people, and they have the freshest tasting authentic Mexican food around and really good breakfast burritos. Don's and Dylan's Double D's Barbecue and Smoker. Great tasting barbecue, falls off the bone. They're amazing in the area and a great tasting uh, food truck. Alex Pablo, who goes above and beyond helping out businesses with menu that we design and helps them expand. Thank you. 19th Hole Bar and Grill, a great place to, and a fun atmosphere for great tasting food. Fish and chips, steak night, taco Tuesday, go by and check them out. Chico, chicken and pizza. Best tasting fried chicken around and amazing tasting pizza and specialty subs. Thank you for being part of this podcast. The Big Apple Diner. When you pull in that driveway and you see the decor, it takes you back to 1950. And the amazing decor and great tasting breakfast, lunch, and dinner and 30 kinds of milkshakes are to die for. And the Dandelion Sticker Company. Amanda single mom brought an idea now a vision and reality making awesome stickers hats decals so you want to expand your business check her out dandelion sticker company thank you for being part of this podcast 
Also, on the Chit and Chat Podcast.com page, you can go to each business, click on them, order from them, check them out. They are great businesses here in the area, and I love teaming up with them and looking forward to teaming up with other businesses as well. That's support local businesses. Thank you for being part of the Chit and Chat Encouraging One Another Podcast. Encouraging fun conversations and amazing music every Wednesday here on Chit and Chat, the Encouraging One Another Podcast. Our next song is by Rocky Michaels. Beyond the Rain. Was a boy with a dream of rock and roll stardom and a girl who hoped to shine the bright light. beyond the rain
Michael Michaels, Beyond the Ring, here on Chit and Chat, the encouraging one of the podcast. <laughs> Life is like a storybook. We're the writers of our own stories and the makers of our own destiny. And each new day is a chapter, a new challenge, a new path, a new journey. We need to make the most of it, make it worthwhile live it to the fullest. Live it its limitless potential and turn it into an amazing life story in which we can be proud of and inspire others. I truly believe each and every one of us has a story. Every day a new chapter Sometimes adventurous, sometimes sad, sometimes a little crazy, but it's your story. Cherish each and every day, each and every moment that comes your way. And when the kids spill milk on the floor, they break something. The dog does what dogs do. It's okay. It's life. Things happen. It's your story. It's your chapter. I would challenge you and encourage you. Keep going. Keep writing your story. song is by Kirsty Krause, a brand new song she has out, and I'm hoping I say this right. <laughs> it, it's, it's tough. Beaches be crazy. <laughs> Here we go.
beaches be crazy beaches be crazy beaches be crazy beaches be crazy beaches be Thank you so much today for joining the Chit Chat Encouraging One Hour Podcast. My guest was Sergio Robles from CBS's show Tough as Nails. Great time talking with him, sharing his story, some challenges and adversity he's gone through, passing with his dad and his brother. He uh, is a cancer survivor. We had so much fun. I got to talk to him for a couple of hours. And we talked offline a little bit too. You know, he, he likes the Amazing Race. I like the Amazing Race. I would love to team up, team up with him one day and do the Amazing Race. That'd be so awesome. <laughs> but uh, also, we had great music by Benji Phonic, Sonny Mr. Gessel, Maeve DeVoe, Rocky Michaels, and Kirsty Krauss. Great tunes and always just fun conversations with people from all around the world. You never know. Who's going to pop on here and be a guest on this podcast? And I literally email, text, message anyone and everyone. I just think of a show or think of a, you know, see a musician or some music. I'm inviting them on for an interview or to share their music. It is so much fun. I love doing this. My goal one day is to do this full time and just meet people. Uh, eventually, you know, video chats and video in person interviews would be awesome. But uh, this is Chit and Chat, the encouraging one other podcast, but it's always about encouraging others and just having fun conversations to give you a chance to get away from the craziness and busyness of life for an hour or so and just hear some great music by some very good artists. And, uh, they are from all around the world. I've had musicians on from Australia, uh, Poland, uh, Liverpool, all over the United States and Canada as well. So please subscribe and follow to the podcast. It can be heard on Spotify, Anchor, iHeartRadio, and TotalMixRadio.org uh, through the Zeno Radio app. And uh, Total Mix Radio's playing it quite often. So thank you very much for being part of the podcast. Till next time, I'm Jody Sheffield, host of Chit and Chat, the encouraging one other podcast. This is Shit and Chat, the encouraging one other podcast. It's always about encouraging others. <laughs>